So now that we're happy with our grain layers, we can start actually putting color onto our model. The first thing I like to do is create a simple layer that lets me control the specularity on the model. So I'm just going to create a new material and I'll keep the color default and uh, adjust the roughness on the layer by putting it up to one. So there will be no specularity on the model while I'm texturing, but I still have this layer at the very bottom of my stack. So I can always go back to it and quickly slide the slider down and check out uh, the model with the specularity on in case I want to. So that gives me a bit of freedom in the process. So on top of that, I create the base colors folder and I'm going to start putting my color layers into it. So my process of texturing is very simple. It's basically close to that of real life painting and stacking layers of uh, light washes of color on top of each other. So the first layer I'm creating is a base color for my skin. And I want something a little bit peachy, a little bit orangey in tone, uh, roughly in the middle range in terms of value and saturation. So I don't want it to be too bright or too dark and basically a good base to start off with. So all I'm concerned with is the color. So if you alt click on the color channel, it will turn off everything else and just keep the color. So I'm happy with this layer. Now we're going to try and add something darker and use our ambient occlusion layer to place it on the model. So I just duplicated my layer, control D, and now I'm making uh, the color slightly darker and a bit more saturated and also a little bit more red. And I'm going to use a mask, a bitmap mask to be precise, and add an ambient occlusion that we baked into that mask. So now, as you can see, uh, the effect is inverted of what we want. Uh, so everything that's, I want everything that's occluded to be darker. So in order to get there, you have to invert your mask. So I added, added levels onto the mask and press invert. And now I can also modulate the levels slightly to make it more intense or less intense until I'm quite happy. So I like this and I'm ready to start adding additional layers onto my model. And start. we're going to start with something a bit more red. So let's create a red layer, uh, quite a saturated red. We can always tone it down with the opacity later. So again, pressing on the uh, color, so nothing else is of interest to us right now. And I'm going to add a black, simple black layer. So now that I paint, if I paint with white on top of it, it will reveal our red material. So I'm going to select my favorite brush for this, which is a dirt brush. There are several of them. I'm using dirt one, which is a nice uh, cloudy alpha on it. And that way it gives, it will give us a lot of breakup very quickly. So I'm going to turn on the, uh, symmetry. That way we can deal with both sides of the model very quickly. And turn on the, the flow slightly and the opacity and basically paint directly onto the model wherever you want the redness to appear. So this is a perfect time to start looking at your references. So make the brush slightly smaller so it's putting the redness nicely inside the eye, around the eyes, because he's got small eyes, around the nose, a little bit at the tip of the nose. Uh, he looks a bit like Rudolph right now, but that's not, of a, not a concern to us right now. So this is the RBX imaging that I referred to earlier. And this is basically what you want to look at when you're painting this. So again, redness around the cheeks, around the lips, and you want to add breakup to the lips 
later on as well, as you'll see. So the lips are not just solid color. And this uh, cloud brush is a perfect tool for that. So add it to where the chin is, where he's gonna shave. Maybe he's got some scratches there. I'm just spreading it around the model when I think there will be red areas. So the nipple area, bit of a chest, I want it to be a bit more red. And like I said, I'm not worried about it being too strong or him looking like a clown at the moment. We can always tone it down later. So if you want to see what your mask is doing, you can go into the mask in the drop down menu in your viewport and you'll see exactly the black and white layer that you're painting. So if you're pressing X, you switch between black and white and you can paint in and paint out the details as you desire. If you press M, you're switching back to the material mode from the uh, channel mode. So I'm just painting on that redness I also added another layer, which is a bit more grayish red. As you can see, a bit more purpley. It's around the eye area, but also around the chin. To tone down that bright redness, sort of counteract it. So in the end, I decided to tone down this uh, redness slightly, so because it was a bit too much. And I also created on top another layer of red, this time a bit more pinkish red. In the same way, basically, just using the dirt brush and all those little spots I created by just toning down the size of the brush and painting it with a more concentration. So another, to break up the color of our skin, which is a bit of this peachy yellow, uh, reddish tone, uh, I added a layer of yellow and I painted it with a very bright yellow and then just turned down the opacity. Again, I painted it in symmetry and with a dirt brush, as well as a dirt brush three, which is a spotted sort of dirt brush. And you can clearly see that I did make some sharp strokes with my brush and they sort of created lines. And I'm not really worried about that. I'm going to clean that up later on with a refinement layer. So it doesn't really matter if it's blotchy and spotted. I just want to lay down colors. So here's another color, which is a bit more toned down, desaturated red color, uh, where the stubble would be. And now um, let's have a look at the veins. So the, the way I paint veins is basically with a simple soft brush. The first soft white brush is perfect for that. It already has a fairly low flow by default. And I just take a greenish, bluish color and basically paint wherever I want the veins to appear. So what you want to do is check anatomy books or just search online for a map of veins on a human head. They would usually appear around the middle of the forehead, down the nose, around the eye and around the mouth and down the neck and into the clavicles and into the armpits. You don't want the lines to be like really harsh. You want to break them up because the veins are not all at the same depth inside your skin. They sort of vary and meander around. So you want the, the depth to look different in different spots. 
And then you just turn down the opacity of the layer once you're happy with the placement of the veins. So it's a very simple process and nothing very complicated. And you can also layer them with a bit more blue and a bit more green on top of each other for more variety. Another great technique to use for adding a bit more variety to your model and a bit, bit more redness is to use a, uh, some other brushes that uh, subs come with Substance Painter, like a Craig's brush, for example. This brush lets you add a lot of simple patterns that kind of look like uh, little veins, little broken capillaries. So I created another bright red layer basically and uh, used a black mask, but this time drew with this Craig's brush and you can see it creates a little net spider web effect. It's very thin and delicate. So if you tone down the size of the brush, you can use it on the side of the nose to paint in the little details that the broken capillaries would have on a real face. And you can basically go back and forth between black and white and break up the flow of these capillaries so it doesn't look mechanical and artificial, but has this sort of organic feeling. Last thing that I would like to show you is when it comes to redness, adding redness to your model is uh, using the curvature map that is baked by Substance Painter. So I added a new red layer and now uh, I'm using a bitmap mask, but instead of uh, ambient occlusion, I'm going to use the curvature that's baked inside Substance Painter with my other additional maps. So once again, the same as with the ambient occlusion, the map is inverted. So I want to add levels to it and make sure that the redness appears inside the cracks rather than on top of the skin. So I'm adding a levels layer. I'm going to invert the mask and I'm going to ten tone down the opacity so you can see now there is redness inside the pores and inside the lines of the face. And when you add a paint modifier on top of that mask layer, you can start painting out the areas of the mask that you don't like. And again, vary the, the, uh, vari the opacity of the redness on the model. So when you turn that up the opacity, you can see what I'm doing. I'm breaking up those lines. So they're not too regular. You don't want like straight lines on your face. You want it to be very subtle. Also feel that there is too much redness all over. So I'm going to go back to my levels adjustment and play with the levels some more to reduce the redness a bit. So it's only in the cracks and not so much on the surface. That's better. So now I can tone down the opacity again and just have a tiny bit of detail from this mask on top of the face. I think that looks great. So to break up my uh, skin a bit more, I also added a bit of purple color around the eyes. Usually you have a lot of purple in white people in the corners of the eyes. There's also some bright color, bright, wh almost white color in the corners of the eyes and on top of the nose. By rule, by default, the brightest colors on a Caucasian skin will appear where the bone is closest to the skin. So here you can see another layer that I added of redness using the curvature map. 
This time I did it with a darker red. So if I bump it up in opacity, you can see there is a darker red layer over everything again, highlighting the cracks and the uh, cavities on the model. Now let's have a look at how we can break up this yellow color. So I'm going to create a new layer and add a blast mag to it so I can quickly pick from my model. I want to pick this yellow and basically create a slightly darker color and a bit more saturated. So now if I paint, you can see I get nice color that would break up that yellow. I'm going to use a spots brush, which is one of the default brushes. And what it does is spreads little dots all around the model when you're dragging the brush. So you can change the alpha for this brush. We don't want those circles. We want something a bit more patchy looking. So I'm going to just go into my alpha of the brush in the properties panel. And I'm going to select one of the default alphas that come with Substance Painter. It's called the Dirt Blur. And it's basically like a scattered circle. And if I take, take down the uh, size of the brush and just paint, you can see it, it adds a little bit of like tiny freckles all over the model when you drag it. So you can quickly break up your color and you can play around with the intensity of this brush. Later on, I'm going to show you how to do very similar effect just using uh, default materials that you can download from Substance Source website. So it speeds up the whole process. So this is basically this, the whole process of painting colors, base colors on top of the model using Substance Painter. It is very simple and no hustle way to texture your character.